Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another newscast. This one is episode 525, and I'm joined here today with... Uh, <laughs> I guess I should introduce myself, actually. I'm the Spider-Punk, Kirkland Patzer, and who are you? I'm the What Topics Taylor Field. The What Topics Taylor Field. I love it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we just had a very jam-packed weekend full of just fun times, great fundraising that we did for Extra Life. We all, all the donations were going to BC Children's Hospital. Huge shout out to everyone that tuned in, shared the link, donated, just just turned it on and just watched the the goofiness that was going on. It was there's a lot of weird stuff going on, and uh, no, we want to give a big GV thank you to each and every single one of you that tuned in and it was is very successful you know again it's all going to a phenomenal cause uh which is bc children's hospital that's our provincial children's hospital here in in western canada and uh our total number was just over two thousand dollars two thousand fifty was i think the exact amount and yeah no that was that was just just it, it's always great doing that it's always nice like the after effect because it does take a toll on our bodies you know every day we're getting we're not getting younger taylor field so i feel like the 24 hour you know stay up all nights when we this was our sixth annual and at the first annual or the first one that we ever did it was I feel like I was already pulling like all nighters all the time, and it was just like, oh, this is nothing. Like you probably just like stay up the whole next day. Probably just yeah, I'm not gonna say party all night the next night, but just stay up again. You know, do do what you want. But it gets a little bit more challenging the older we get, and it's uh, I don't know how you were feeling like the next day after. I got lucky because I I'm in school right now, so I don't have school on Mondays, so I had like an extra recovery day. How was your back to work after the big 24 hour stream? <clears throat> well, yeah, Sunday I had a quick nap. And then I, I just kind of like took it easy. We went went out for uh, a br brunch cactus club and just kind of took it easy with Madison for the rest of the day. And then Monday hit when I went to work. I did fuck all. Oh, man. It was just <laughs> I was not in it. It was snowing like crazy outside. I thought, oh, this That's is right. just like let's be inside weather. And I shouldn't say I didn't do anything. Like I did some stuff, but it was like snail's pace. It was not a good day. Uh, yeah. But no, it, today it, was it. It takes a while to, to to get back in the swing of things, but no, that was that was so much fun. Again, like I said, huge thank you to everyone that that jumped in there. We had um, some comments from our Patreons about it from Sam, you you. I think that's how you say his name. He said, no questions, just to let you know. I love the ladder match. Thought it was hilarious. Yes, the big ladder match between Taylor Field and Madison. You know, your significant other against Travis. A very fair fight. I was officiating it. I got I got taken out during the match. It was it was pretty intense, and I I don't I don't think I knew what I was signing up for. Just getting pulled into the action like that. But no, you you were successful. You beat Travis and fair and square. <laughs> there was. There was no questions about it. I'd say nothing that Travis could really com complain about. I don't think. I think you, 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 yeah, you, you, you've dominated him in that match. And mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, huge credit to just, I guess, Travis for <laughs> for uh, uh, editing that that wrestling match, putting it all together. We had a fantastic commenta commentary with uh, Dylan Moss and Connor. I don't even know what Connor's last name is. I, I don't know his last name. It's just Connor to me. <laughs> it's just Connor. It's like a, Mc, a McLovin situation. He has no last name. <laughs> but uh, no, they they killed it on the commentary. And if you haven't checked that out, definitely go do that. I think it's all on the YouTube feeds. Um, yeah, I, I think we did cutouts for the trivia, which was, again, huge shout out to everyone that participated in that. We got Fanboy Clay in the chat going hashtag Team Taylor. That's right. I was on Team Taylor as well. So it was it was a successful trivia battle for us. And uh, yeah, no, it was just a crazy convergence of spheres with just all the different, um, what would you call them? Just the different podcasters that assembled to us and just helped us uh, put on that show. We had different hosts doing the DC section, the Star Wars section, uh, the Marvel section, and it was just lots and lots of fun. So as I said, go check that out. I think it's all on the YouTube, like the specific cutouts for for what happened there. If you just want to like tune into those segments, I think the entire stream is also on there, broken down into mm -hmm. a couple segments because YouTube has their their little grievances with having a full 24 hour video on YouTube. I don't understand why it's something about data or something like that. I don't know what it is, but nonetheless, um, yeah, just just huge shout out to all that, and uh, can't wait to do it again next year. You know, we, we get like a full year of rest until that moment comes. Um, but 
yeah and then with that to the side everything else to plug dylan and i just did a fantastic side quest episode last night i believe it's on the feeds today we did our part two review of plague tale um we did like jump right into spoilers so if you played that game plague tale requiem highly recommend it it was very phenomenal we had a great discussion it was like two hours of just breaking down like the the yeah the spoiler section of at, at the end of that um i believe you and you and travis even did a gotham knights side quest or it's coming down the feed some point it should um, be it should be live should be live yeah. and then in, in the near future too stay tuned on that side quest feed because mr taylor field and i are gonna be dropping a modern warfare 2 review uh we had a fantastic battle uh during that 24-hour stream and taylor you know i'll give you credit you beat me fair and square two games to one and but very very close as all the matches not in the game that counts <laughs> yeah that one i, I can sleep soundly knowing that i i you know, by like uh, the skin of my teeth, I beat you in Modern Warfare 2. And again, there was a little bit of controversy there uh, about the perk system. But, uh, you know, we'll we'll save that for another day. Um, so, yeah, to just expect a review for that. We got Black Panther this week. So much stuff. So just keep your eye. I'm not going to list everything. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. So just keep your eye on all the feeds, the review feed, the news feeds, the just everything feed, SideQuest feed. Um, M Emritus. I hope I say your name right. I apologize. Uh, but he says, Travis the Goat. Big Travis fanboy. Travis isn't here today, so I'm not going to no, like, acknowledge you. He I, lost the wrestling match. So exactly. Lawyers, he didn't see the clause inside the contracts. He's not allowed to be on the newscast for the first Travis got his ass feature. kicked in wrestling yeah he's probably in the <laughs> hostel right now after the the whooping that taylor uh, gave him there but uh yeah again just keep your eyes on the feeds i'm i think i'm done with all the plugs there go check out our patreon where you get everything ad free exclusive early uh huge shouts out to our patreon producers aaron braden april darkness molly biggs and joshua wright um yeah just supporting us the highest tier love you guys uh go check out manscape you can get yourself 20 percent off worldwide shipping using the gv promo code gv pod you will get yourself 20 percent off worldwide shipping as well as supporting us uh so that we can just bring you this new content more content you know it's a uh, directly proportional proportional directly poor, yeah, maybe that is the right way to say that i don't know i've, I've had a long day today so <laughs> i'll instead of trying to find some more crafty way, things to say i think we're ready to just get right into this unless i'm missing any other ones um no, that's, I'm going to save those Patreon questions till later. So, yeah, Taylor Field, we got a fun newscast today. We're talking about my favorite spider, my favorite spider, oh my gosh, my favorite comic book type heroes, which is the Spidey uh, men, as you can tell by my name. I am the spider punk today. I'm so excited to unravel this news with you. Um, so, right off the hop, Taylor Field, Andrew Garfield, and Toby Maguire, what do those names do for you? Do they just tickle your fancy? Or are you like, oh, those are my Spider-Man? What, what does that do when you hear that? <laughs> when I hear those names, I think of, you know, a younger version of myself back in like early 2000s and then like later 2000s and uh, makes me happy. Uh, back in a time when I could stay up and easily pull off a 24 hours, you know, gaming session, but uh, not so much anymore. Um, Oh, simpler times. I'm sorry. I'm not sure where this is steer steer heading into. I'm I just so wanted to get your like, thoughts on like oh, Toby. Yeah. It's like, um, oh yeah, it's, I hate those guys. I don't. I didn't think that was going to be the case. Because um, yeah, our our main topic today is basically if this isn't like set in stone again. This is all going to be rumor mill here. But just Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield possibly returning in just their Spider characters. We after Spider Man No Way Home, we kind of assumed that would be coming at some point. But the rumor here is that they might be making an appearance in across the spider-verse i think is the first one and then because the next spider-verse movie is going to be broken into two parts that's the sony animation one um into the spider-verse you know the, the the first one that i mean i have that's one of my favorite movies of all time and i don't think anybody has ever said like a negative thing about that it's such a great movie um but yeah there's a rumor going around that they will actually be making an appearance in uh, or a cameo appearance, rather, in either Across the Spider-Verse or Beyond the Spider-Verse. I didn't even know that they had two names. I thought it was just part one and part B, so that's goes to show how much I know about the subject. But, um, what, yeah, what does that do much for you? Like, just, like, yeah, like, just knowing that maybe you won't be getting them right away, um, I mean, in any project, because that, that project, it was supposed to come out already, Across the Spider-Verse. Um, I think last month now, October um, something was that initial date. It got pushed back, of course. Um, so now there's a rumor going around that both Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire will be making a cameo in um, yeah, the Across the Spider-Verse movie. What does that do for you? 
<clears throat> well, I, th- I think it's fantastic. I have been really wanting them to, at least as some kind of confirmation, they're going to come back into the, uh, the larger scheme of things. And at least we, were, we got them in the big screen live action. Like, we got... What more could you ask for? We got the the Trinity of Spider Man live action. It was fantastic. So to have them come back would just be another extra perk, an extra bonus, just a cherry on top to what we got already. To have them into or have them added into the Spider Verse films, I think is great because then we can kind of. It depends how they write them in there, but in my head canon, I would then see okay, Spider Verse is officially an MCU film. You know, it's tied in there, so that gets me super excited to think about. And, yeah, I think we could have a lot of fun. I think there would be a lot of very, very cool stuff just to have Spider-Man that we're familiar with. Yeah. And we know their history just to get to interact with Miles Morales. I think that will be super, super cool. Because we did get latched on to the Peter Parker from that first one uh, into the Spider-Verse. And that was right. a very much a, a tribute like to... Peter B. Parker? Like yeah. Peter Johnson's character? Yeah, okay. Yeah, very much a tribute to uh, Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker, I would say, from yeah. <laughs> you know, the live-action films. But again, not spot-on, not the exact same and confirmed, but I think it'd be very cool to get that uh, Andrew, Garf- uh, Andrew, yeah, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, just having them voice their characters, too, and just to know what their stories are a little bit more, maybe if they want to build off of what Tobey Maguire's story is like in his world. Yeah. I would love to get a little bit more of an exploration on, uh, of that kind of... Um, yeah yeah area does it like bother you though being like oh like i can't just get them in a live action thing like i'm just gonna be getting mm. them in an animated scene no because i know I, like they are older uh i mean nothing wrong oh. with that but uh <laughs> uh i i do think like you can do a lot more with this animated film and just continue to like dive more into their story and what's been going on with them right now True. and then it's definitely not a, hey, we're not going to give you these characters in a live-action film again. I think that's right. definitely in the cards, and they'd be fools not to after the success of No Way Home. So I think it's just a, a matter of time. I think this is a way that they're going to use these characters to boost up one of their other films a little bit more and then maybe segue into something else with them. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, when I hear something like that, that, you know, we'll be getting them in possibly the Spider-Verse, like, I'm never going to be like, oh, don't give me that. It's more so just like... Uh, it means I'm not going to be getting the live action version of them because they, like, they're just so fantastic on screen. I mean, they showcase that on just the on screen chemistry that those three Spider Men had together in No Way Home. Um, so I don't know. I, I read that and it's like, oh, that's cool. But it, like, I just would have preferred it in live action. Now, as you said, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be getting that by any means. Um, and I, I know, like, as soon as I hear their voices, I'm just going to be super grinning ear to ear and just, just loving, like, what I'm getting on there. Uh, but my initial thoughts was just like, oh, okay, this means that we're we're probably not going to be seeing them on live action for a good while. Um, I don't know. Possibly ever? Is that too bold to say? I don't, I, I don't think so. Like, we got them in No Way Home. We got, we got that great performance from them all. I, I don't think anything's, like... Uh, Everything like anything's guaranteed to just get them in like a live action project before and I don't know I think after No Way Home too um like that came out less than a year ago now but I still feel like there was a bit of a and I still think we are in this window of of like oh this is like a perfect time to like really really uh just get your money's worth on like the hype of everyone's like still having that in their memory and then if you have like a project with these characters it's like holy shit like this is amazing like everybody still loves that i think if you wait a while maybe the hype might die down there but who knows because toby waited like well over a decade to come back in the spidey suit right so and obviously everyone still was loving all that stuff so i don't know maybe it's just maybe i'm worrying for not a good reason there um anything else to add on the live action well, portion there I suppose mention in the chat here, just hold until Secret Wars. Well, I yeah, do think good like, point. Good point. you totally could. Um, like you said, like I want, you, you don't want to say no to something like this. Like, oh, it's more content, so that's great. Yeah. And I'm not sure don't if that's what S-Bubs is implying. <laughs> like, just hold like nothing until Secret Wars. Like, no, I would say put Toby or and, and Andrew into this film because at least then you're building up the universe and you can explore a few things that you couldn't do in live action. And, yeah. uh, and then, yeah, just put them in secret wars as well. I do think secret wars is going to have a few uh, live action, at least uh, live action, a few characters like 
in this live action role like they belong Andrew. in there they belong in there yeah that, that that's a great point that Espo's brought up there is i feel like it's just it's just far down the line where it's just like oh i just want it like right now but again that's probably just my my young generational mindset of give me give me what i want and give me it now um a couple other fun things in there and and maybe they're just giving i mean as in you'll want have to wait that long to get them in live action there you go i don't know why i read that so weird but <laughs> good point there s pubs um uh, what was i gonna say oh yeah and then, like the thing with like the cameo is if it is a cameo it's not like they have to write a whole story around like toby and andrew's spider-man in the spider-verse right like they could easily just pop up really quickly have their lines because their voices are just I'm not going to say they're the most, there's not like a Morgan Freeman iconic voice, but like I'll definitely recognize them if I hear them. And again, I'll, I'll totally be grinning ear to ear. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note too, there's a couple of rumor, a couple other rumored spider people who could be appearing in um, the Across the Spider-Verse slash Beyond the Spider-Verse ones, which um, not sure if you'll recognize these names. The, the first one is Yuri Lowenthal, who was the voice actor for Insomniac's PlayStation Spider-Man game uh, for PS4. Did you get that on PC? I remember you were bouncing around the possibility well, of getting it. I'm waiting for a nice Black Friday sale. Oh, I respect that. Yeah, like I, that. I'm, a sh I'm a sales shopper as well. So <laughs> it's not going anywhere, you know? His, he did phenomenal with Spider with the just his performance with Spider Man. And I think that could be really fun, especially if they like really make it noticeable that like he is the PS4 Spider Man. I'm not saying like like you could have his his spider his PS4 Spider Man suit. But like, even if they like switch the animation to actually be that like three D Sony like PlayStation animation with everyone else that's kind of two D, I think that could be really fun. Because yeah. again, it would just be so noticeable. So I I really hope that is the case. A couple other ones that could be joining the fray is Josh Keaton and Christopher Daniel Barnes's versions of the characters. So uh, both of them from the respective shows, one being Spectacular Spider Man, and the other one is the '90s animated Spider Man series. Which again, throw them in there. More Spider Man, the better. I think that's a fantastic idea and i like spider it, yeah in, into the spider verse no what's it called now Sp <laughs> spider verse, spider -verse. <laughs> yeah yeah like the, the first one the all these spider verse and multiverse names are messing with my brain but that is like a 10 out of 10 movie in my eyes i absolutely love it it like still brings me to tears every time i watch it so just hearing all of these possible spider people like getting thrown into the mix it's just it just makes the little the little spider-man fanboy and me just just totally smile and it's just it's just really exciting news so um yeah but that being said i mean i don't really have anything else again this is just kind of rumors for now uh i'm excited to just keep my eyes on on the news feeds and stuff like that on what more announcements come out of this and uh yeah do you, you know the uh, do you know the tier the rumor tier of this is it like a is it a z tier or is it s tier uh i really don't know i saw something that said the cosmic circus and i had never heard that name before so mm. take that how you will <laughs> um and actually you reminded me of another name that i was going to shout out here which was and um, apparently this is like set in stone too we have uh daniel kalua you know most notably from nope Black Panther. Uh, I'm not sure if he's in the second Black Panther or not, but we'll find out on Thursday. Yeah. Apparently, he's been <laughs> casted in as Spider Punk, as my name stated, and that is one of the costumes in the PS4 Spider-Man game. Which you know, once you get your hands on that PC version of the game, you'll you'll be able to rock that suit. And uh, pun not intended, but I kind of wish it was because that's a fun pun right there. Um, and yeah, I think that's fantastic. I, I love Daniel Kaluuya. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Obviously, it's a little bit different when you're voice acting, but I think uh, just knowing that that type of character is going to be making an appearance in the uh, Across the Spider-Verse, that's lots of fun. And like I said, the more Spider-Man, the, the, the better. So, um, yeah, Taylor. Oh, and that one was actually reported by the Hollywood Reporter. So that is like A plus tier, I think. Yeah. S tier. So that yeah. one is, uh, that one's there. So again, I love talking about Spider Spider Man news and all that stuff. Um, and with that, unless you have anything else to add on it, I, think we'll I just last, hope our first I hope, I hope that they put uh, the Ghost Rider Spider Man into uh, this because he's Ghost Rider Spider Man. He's a skin thing? in the game. Yeah, an Insomniac Spider Man. Oh yes, like the white skull. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Oh my gosh, part of me knows this. <laughs> I, I, I think that's going to be like your main <laughs> skin when you're playing the game. It's very much Ghost Rider. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to, for, for, to get your thoughts on that game because it's it's just fantastic. And I haven't even played the Miles Morales one yet. That was kind of like the 
it's it's like a sequel i call it like a 0.5 sequel game because it's not it's not like a fully fledged game like it has like the same game engine and everything a couple new features and stuff like that but uh yeah nonetheless it's fantastic and with that unless you have anything last minute to throw in there nope we're gonna take our first ad break here and we'll be back to uh talk about the rest of the news that we'll be banging around so we'll go back all right and we are back let me just check my little show notes here um let's see oh yeah let's talk about some dc stuff here so um superman director rumors uh specifically man of steel 2 which we you know we got the gr glorious announcement i i can't remember the 24 hour stream like it just skews my mind i can't remember like what time frame we're in right now so i can't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago but we got the big announcement that henry cavill is back in spider-man uh <laughs> <laughs> whoa it's a cross that, that century. would be amazing actually no he's not spider-man i apologize uh fake <laughs> news no he will be returning to don the big s for hope in the superman suit uh just coming back and that is i mean that's fantastic news in and of itself but that's not what we're here to talk about today we're talking about we're here to talk about the possible directors in that role so apparently this is a c-tier rumor so you know get your barometer calibrated i guess in that in that uh in that realm but uh two big names that even i've been able to recognize i'm not like the best with just picking out director names and stuff like that but i recognize both these so that goes to show you how big they are so david yates uh most famously did <laughs> recently the um fantastic beasts series he also did uh harry potter deathly hollows part one and two half blood prince or the phoenix so again some phenomenal big Big, big budget, big like triple A titles, um, and then the other one that I saw there was uh, <laughs> it's not James Gunn. It's not James Gunn. It's Joseph Kaz Kaczynski, um, which Joseph Kaczynski just most recently did Top Gun Maverick, possibly like one of my favorite movies of this year. I've s seen it I, just two times now, but it feels like I've seen it like four times because I, I I just love that movie so much. Um, it's done Spiderhead. Go check out Travis and I's review of that. It was okay, but. Uh, yeah, again, like another big budget film, uh, but big budget film budget. That's not what I was trying to say. Big budget film, uh, AAA just genre there. So I, again, Taylor, I know you recognize these names at least because you've seen the movies, mm -hmm. at least some of them. Um, so again, those are some names that were rumored around the possible Superman directing. The rumor is is that they apparently want directors who've worked on sequels and can deal with legacy, which. I mean that's totally fitting, you know, for, especially for something like this that it's, it's it's, like it is gonna be a sequel of Man of Steel. I I I don't know, and I, if you're gonna ask me what I thought, I don't think it would be titled Man of Steel two, but still, it it is kind of like a, a continuation with Henry Cavill's character of S Superman. I keep trying to say Spider Man. I gotta get that Spidey, <laughs> Spidey verse out of my head, but. Uh, I mean, like, what do you think about that statement? Is that they're just looking for these these legacy type directors? I, I I think it totally makes sense for a character like Superman, who is not like Blue Beetle or something. Like, this is like a big. This is this is the Mount Rushmore for DC, right? And obviously, you want to hit the ground running very very uh, successfully with the first returning of Henry Cavill as a character. But yeah, but what I said there, what do you think? Sorry, what was the name of the first director again? David Yates. He David did Yates. Um, the Deathly Hallows Part 1, 2, or the Phoenix, Fantastic Beasts. Um, okay. he's, a, he's a Brit, if that helps you. He's a Brit. <laughs> um, Legend of Tarzan. Uh, I, uh, as far as Harry Potter sequels go, um, like there's nothing wrong with Deathly Hallows, but... Deathly Hallows and Fantastic Beats, Beats, Beasts are definitely the lower tier of the Harry Potter sequels. There are some <laughs> more preferable ones before those. Uh, Fantastic Beasts is definitely not honoring anything legacy-wise about Harry Potter, if you ask me. So I think... Like, it's prequel, respect, right? Come it's prequel, now. yeah, <laughs> even then. So Yates, if you ask me, I think you should definitely just kind of... Just stay away for a little bit longer. Uh, <laughs> I think as far as if we're talking legacy, like Top Gun Maverick so savage. is an incredible legacy film. Truly, truly is. Good My point. steel case came in the mail today. It's it's finally oh. here. So, Is yeah. it right next to you? It's you not, show it's me the, image. It's oh, in the okay. box. It's in the I'm box. not going to make you go get it. I'm excited <laughs> to see it in person, though. Oh, yeah. So I, I think that uh, a director that can lead a team to just 
blow everyone's minds out of the water with like Top Gun Maverick. I think that that's just evident right there. Now, of course, there's Spider Head, but that's not a legacy film. That it was him just kind of like uh, trying to, I don't know, get spiffy, get jiffy, and just try and do something new and. Clearly, that's not going to be the case with Man of Steel because it's going to have a lot of other people influencing this. It's going to be a lot of money on the line, a lot of people carefully kind of going through. And plus, you're actually you're going to have uh, like James Gunn involved with this too, right? So right. there's there's going to be a lot of creative, uh, not like addition, but input, creative input coming from different sources right. and people that understand the legacy, people that understand the, the fan base and the community that really want to see Cavill in this role again as Superman and just to really overall deliver a fantastic sequel to what we got before with Man of Steel 1. So I yeah, think that having point. having that guy come back is a uh, or come at least into this this new fold would be a great idea. I think the chat's popping off here right now. I think people are... F- I know, yeah. I was going to bring some up. Fanboy Clay is, I think, siding with you there. <laughs> Yates apparently needs to st- get as far away from DC Studios as possible. For are you saying from D for DC's benefit or Yates's benefit, fanboy Clay? I'm curious what you think there. <laughs> and then he was uh, he was throwing in there. Would you feel differently if we heard Yates was James Gunn's choice for director on Superman? Um, I I mean, again, I'm kind of like out of my wheelhouse here with directing choice on like oh their vision is just perfect for this type of story that they would tell. I'm really not the best type of person for that, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, just looking at like their their resume and like their list and stuff, I think like what Taylor is mentioning with like the the big ladies, like especially just going from that that kind of statement that I was quoting where they want to capture the the legacy, like they really want to capture that. And I mean, just the list that Joseph, because it. Oh my gosh, Joseph Kaczynski. You can tell I haven't podcasted in a while. Um, has with Top Gun Maverick, um, Tron Legacy. I mean, Legacy's right in the name there. Mm. I, did you see Tron Legacy? Oh yeah. I, I I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I thought it was really good. So, um, yeah. I mean, just from those ones right then and there, like it, it it really captures. I think the feel of what the original ones had, but it just adds on to it, makes it that much better. Um, so to answer your question, Clay. I would probably feel pretty indifferent <laughs> on that. I do trust James Gunn. I really like what he's put out. Um, I don't think I've loved everything he's done. Um, really not a fan of Slither. <laughs> but, but again, that's uh, it's not like he's really directing on this point. He's more of just like the CEO type role. So um, for me personally, it wouldn't really change too much there. Um, and then just catching up to S. Pubs in the chat said, how would you react if there's just a huge buff Spider-Man in Secret Wars? Takes off the mask and it's Henry Cavill. I would absolutely love that because I love Henry Cavill. I don't care what he's in. I'm, I'm just rooting for the guy. Him in the Spidey suit. Just like totally skin tight too, just like fucking just just ripped. I think that would be hilarious. Um, and then fanboy Clay reacted, said, "S Bubs, that's Spider Man UK, <laughs> super buff and all." Um, but yeah, I mean, any like, do you have any other like directors that you could pull? Like, I'm not gonna even ask myself because, like I said, I'm really not good at that uh, at that portion of it. Oh, I'm not good. I'm definitely not good at uh, picking directors. Uh, If I had to pick one, uh, people would hate me for this one. Uh, Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. Um, I'm scared for everyone. (laughs) I I would probably... I'd say... uh, Yeah, people would hate... People are going to hate this. I'm just going to alienate myself when I say it. Colin Trevorrow. (laughs) He's good with Colin Legacy. Trevorrow. Yeah, he did the Jurassic World trilogy. Uh, <laughs> he would have done Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker with a oh, fucking no. fantastic, oh no, legacy film there. Um, the only thing I remember about this guy, I mean, obviously I've seen his movies, but I remember on our Jurassic World. What was the last one called? Dominion. Uh, yes. On that review, I I believe. And again, I don't want to misquote you, Travis, but I, th- I think he said something along the lines that Colin Trevorrow <laughs> needs to stay away from these big budget things and just, just <laughs> it's it's not what it's not good. So, uh, and again, major paraphrase there. I apologize, Travis, but I I know he's not a big fan of the things they put out there. So I think you did alienate yourself at least from uh, oh I did a good chunk of the yeah. <laughs> people out there. Um, all right, keeping in the DC realm, we'll be talking about some James Gunn. Uh, you know the big. Like, they're like a split CEO thing, right? They're like, I, I, I can't like, is that what it is? Like, they both are the title of CEO. One's like the more creative side of it. One's the more business side of it. But I think yeah, they just they, they share it. that title of the CEO. So the new CEOs, um, 
<laughs> so unfortunate because I, again, I'm, I'm probably not alone in this. I only really remember James Gunn <laughs> and this other guy whose name is Peter. I don't even know his last name. Um, but, you know, he, he deserves the, the role. So unfortunately, I just not as iconic. He hasn't directed J uh, Guardians. So I'm, I'm not going to not going to remember all this stuff. But uh, so he addressed these air cut, released the air cut things on Twitter. He did a little twitter thread there and it's awesome that i'm pulling up some james gunn tweets and it's not the 2018 <laughs> era of that it's more positive side of it mm -hmm. um i i know you, like i'm not really on twitter that much but i still see these release this or like save the air cut save mm -hmm. legends of tomorrow release the air cut i'm sure you've seen them um so to address that james gunn said open up twitter at the end of a long creative weekend to see the many tweets to hashtag save legends of tomorrow and hashtag release the air cut and fan support for other dc projects over the years the majority of these requests were enthusiastic and respectful really really majority i think 50 percent, james but uh, whatever um and then he continues on Again, there's going to be four tweets here, so I'm going to try and list them off pretty quick here, but it says, As the new and first ever CEOs of DC Studios, Peter and I think it's important we acknowledge you, the fans, and let you know we hear you different. We hear your different desires for the pathways forward for DC. Next tweet. Although our ability to interact on Twitter has been lessened due to the workload of our new positions, we are listening and open to everything as we embark on this journey and will continue to do so for the next few years. Next tweet. But all our initial focus is on story is on the story going forward, hammering out the new DCU and telling the biggest story ever told across multiple films, television shows, and animated projects. Next tweet. We invite all the DC fandoms from across the multiverse and everyone else as well into this new universe. We can't wait to reveal more. You know, some, some well-written things, nice CEO written things there. My question to you, Taylor, is... Is this a good way to like address these types of things of release the air cut, you know? And as he said, majority of them are nice. I think that's being pretty generous. It's probably like 50-50 that he saw people just like yelling at him on all this stuff. But yeah, like, do you think this is a good way to address it? Do you think it'd be better to just like completely ignore all of the, all of like the shouting into the Twitter sphere and all these things, the fans demanding the cuts of whatnot? Because we did get the Snyder cut, which... I think you're like me. I absolutely love the Snyder Cut, and I was not one rooting for <laughs> hashtag release the Snyder Cut every single day. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think about that? I I'm a big advocate for interacting with you know fans of a franchise or fans of an IP online. I think that's, that's why online is there for the most part, so you can right. communicate and keep in touch with people. So I think it speaks volumes to have a new head of a massive corporation and, and just like story and narrative characters all that stuff just come forward and just kind of make people known that hey like we're we're listening there's a lot of positivity coming in from you guys and like because of this we're going to actually take this in as feedback because at the end of the day they're they're a company they're running a company and companies thrive off of having feedback you know you go to walmart and you get that bloody receipt it's like take a 15 minute survey for a hundred dollar gift card that you're never going to fucking win but they want you to do the survey so <laughs> there's it's no important. gift card <laughs> there's no gift card no so it's it's all about uh it's all about getting to know what the community wants and i think that's something that dc in my opinion as a dc fan i won't speak for all the like super super fans out there but dc has ignored a lot of what people have wanted for a long time they've just Absolutely. kind of been like doing their own thing and that's something a lot of companies do especially you know video game movie adaptations all these different things they they can get caught up in their ways and ignore what the fans want and then it totally shoots themselves they shoot themselves in the foot because then it's disingenuous to the fan base and with dc the community is very vocal and very passionate about their projects so to finally do this, to listen to the community, I think is great. I think it really makes them feel that what they want is within reach finally. So I think it is a good play. Absolutely. I think you nailed, I think you nailed, I think you hit the nail on the head with uh, you saying of just like, you know, just like open discussion. Like it's it's good to be transparent with your fans uh, across the board. Even if you're saying, like S. Bubs <laughs> mentioned, uh, a nice way of saying no, it's not happening. <laughs> that, that, that's essentially what I got out of it, honestly. But it's not like nope, we're not doing that. Like it's he's he's straight up. You know, we hear what you're saying. We're doing again. It's a very political type way to to say no but i think there i've seen many worse ways to deliver news like that and i think james gunn handled it 
really well just the way that he wrote those um fanboy clay also added and compared to the conversations he has had with snyder cult this this is a great way to address the future of dc studios and yeah like i for me i think it's i think it's a great way to do it um it is maybe unfortunate for those people that are really pushing for release the air cut and save legends of tomorrow um <laughs> i haven't seen too many of those tweets maybe i'm just in the wrong uh uh, <laughs> algorithms on Twitter or what? <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't see it till this tweet, but who knows? Maybe I'm just in the wrong. The the algorithm isn't putting it on my feeds. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I think it's I think it's good that it's. I maybe maybe let me restart there because I was one when they when everyone was going like release the Snyder cut. It, it's not like I was super for or against it. It was just like like what? Well, why does this matter? Like why don't we just focus on like the next projects? Like it it happened. It's not great. You know, and then we'll move on. And then I had to eat my words because I absolutely love the Snyder Cut. I was like, holy shit. Like, that was that was a phenomenal piece of, like, just cinema, as the meme goes. Um, I, I really, really loved it. And maybe if the air cut came out, I would have that exact same reaction. So it is kind of tough for me to say that it's like, oh, it's stupid for people to be rooting for that. Because I felt the effect of what the Snyder Cut had of being done properly. Um, I haven't watched the black and white edition or anything <laughs> like that, but for a four and a half hour movie like it, it it's really really good in my eyes and yeah like if if we got the opportunity to to see this this finely tuned air cut i i think that is cool but like it does take resources and money to like do a release like that and if mm -hmm. especially just the new um like the new people running the show james gunn and thanks s bubs he threw out peter saffron that's his name i'm gonna try i'm gonna write that in my notes i'm gonna try and remember that from now on because i don't want to do peter dirty he, he's just as important as james gunn is uh in the ceo ceo role but yeah like new leadership they're obviously gonna be making new changes and hopefully have like a like a really solid set plan going forward um and unfortunately for you know many people maybe the air cut is something that they really wanted but maybe it's not in the eyes of this new leadership team going forward um let's see some things on the where are we oh yeah in the comments here we got uh sbubs back james gunn has already interacted with lots of people on twitter um for a long time so i think he's already used to addressing the fans and he can bring that to dc studios absolutely peter saffron the conjuring guy oh uh, yes that's all i remember him now it's like a little little uh note i guess to keep going um and then fanboy clay 100 percent agree with us pubs it's something marvel studios doesn't have a basic direct line to the studio gun will be on a short leash he can't be exactly the same as he was but he can talk to the people um and you know like if if his addresses are like done exactly like what he just did I think that's fantastic. I, I think mm -hmm. there's definitely going to be those minority people that are just uh, like, or sorry, the minority group of people that are just so upset with like anything that they say, because that's just what's out there on Twitter. There's a lot of toxicity and stuff like that, but you can't please everyone. And I think that uh, the way that he handled it was really good. Um, you don't think he'll get kind of uh, <clears throat> like defensive and protective over the IP? Like, you know, fuck you. Just <laughs> call him out right on Twitter. I mean... I don't think so at all. I think that would be <laughs> hilarious. Maybe on like April 1st, he could do something like that. And then he could be like, oh, it's just an April Fool's thing. But he can like actually voice what he like genuinely thinks. He's actually just venting. And then he's just like, oh, it's April Fool's. Um, but again, maybe that's something like pre-CEO James Gunn could do <laughs> on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then s -Bubs. Imagine if Feige was active on Twitter. That'd be chaos. He's just like, he gives no fucks. He reruns Marvel. He knows he can't be replaced. He's like, I gave you the MCU. Fuck you guys. You can't, you can't <laughs> complain with what I'm giving you there. Um, right on. Taylor Field, anything else on this DC stuff? Anything you want to shout out? At least, are you going hashtag Legends of Tomorrow? <laughs> I'm not dropping any of those hashtags. Like, <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow, like, who's even a part of that? Is that Arrow? Uh, Dude, I'm not um, the one to ask. I don't know. I, Batgirl? I don't uh, know. Fanboy Kill will probably jump in there and he'll let you know. But Yeah, I know I, I know that there's that. there's definitely yeah, it's following for it. And, I mean, if it's good TV, it's good TV. Why not? I Like, the only projects I know that people have really rallied behind is, like, I think Stargirl and... Uh, Teen Titans and then The Flash Stargirl, Star Stargirl. Like, she looks like Captain America but she's not Captain America um, at least that's how I Holy sorry shit, I probably yeah. just alienated myself again I'm sorry clearly, DC fans I'm clearly just out of the loop I don't know I've never heard of that name before but let me pull up a photo <laughs> of her um, pull that shit up yeah she just reminds me of Captain, Captain America. America is that America's ass oh wow look at that 
That's a wild staff? What is that thing? It's like, I don't really know. But yeah, she's got superpowers from it. But yeah, I'm just like, I'm sorry. She reminds me of Captain freaking America. <laughs> I'm impressed that you, you knew of this character. Um, cool. Yeah. But they're, you they're all, I'm assuming they're all in the same universe. They all like scurry along with other other characters and stuff like that from other yeah D C um, like C it's a CW kind of show I think I think that's what it is so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking fan DC fans don't eat me alive come on now we're we're just joking around here um all right nothing else to throw in there I will take a I don't think it's time for an ad break yet, so we'll, we'll we'll pause there. We'll move on to some Star Wars news. So, um, let me see my little notes here. Yeah. So Taylor Acolyte, this show was probably one of my most I don't want to say like the most anticipated, but it was the most intrigued I've been out of like those the big like Disney Day like. Uh, panel thing that they showed of all the different star wars titles that was coming that was like when we had i don't know i don't think boba was on there because boba was announced through mandalorian but we had things like obi-wan um maybe what was the show that was canceled the uh oh rangers of the new republic yeah yeah that one you had i think andor was there as well but yeah. just just the title of acolyte and again i'm just like just bouncing ideas in my head of what this could be and i'm like holy shit this is so exciting um it seemed like a darker sith possible type thing um the plot has finally been revealed <laughs> we also have a director of sean levy i don't maybe I, I might need your help with some of this stuff because i i feel like i've kind of been out of the out of the loop here but sean levy is that like a really recent announcement or has that always been the case that he's been directing or you don't even know. You don't even know who that is. I'm sorry. He's the Legend of Tomorrow know who director. Is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's on oh, Stargo. No. no, I'm kidding. I, I don't know what he's done. I'll have to pull it up. But uh, yeah, so I mean, we have a director there. Apparently, it's officially been filming, and that tweet was on October 30th. I'm going by at Acolyte News on Twitter. Um, and then they used their source of Bespin Bulletin to announce that. Um, it was a cool like outdoor set market town whatever you might be um and then we got some casting and stuff like that but yeah if it's filming right now i think it's expected to keep filming through may 2023 uh i don't really know what that means for a release window possibly i don't know is december too far uh, out of it and I, I i don't know sean levy was announced today within five minutes of different director of star wars movie i don't <laughs> i don't recall sean levy being announced to direct accolade i thought he was announced to direct like another star wars movie well, there you go. Like Bob said, my maybe it's just wrong. because that other uh, that l other lad dropped out of his. And the other lad I actually have in my notes right here, J.D. Dillard is no longer directing his Star Wars film. Um, and then I guess this is just well, a little, not really a replacement because it's a completely different. Yeah, uh, this trailer. is what Travis shared. Sean Levi is building up that dance card in a big way. He's in talks to direct a secret Star Wars film for Lucas Films. Yeah. Fucking! Yeah, I so never believed that was happening. Oh, I'm getting confused. <laughs> so wait, so Sean Levi, he's directing. He's not directing uh, Acolyte. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you've said? Like he was directing. Acolyte, that is what or? I said. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Because now, unless he's, I read my notes incorrectly, I big apologize he, if that's the case. Maybe he is doing the Acolyte and a movie. <laughs> I don't. I can't confirm that. But <laughs> well, look now. I gotta check my uh, my sources here. Hold on. Let's see. So, as 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 Bubs threw in the chat, Sean Levy, director of Deadpool three, Real Steel, Night at the Museum trilogy, Free Guy, um, and I think it's the next Deadpool. Uh, oh, I guess that would be Deadpool three. Yeah, there you go. Um, it's not Acolyte. It's a very different movie. My apologies, folks. I was mixing up my my, my Just notes. Blame there. Travis. You know, his his show notes. I will. Yeah, it's his yeah. broken back because you fucked him up. He's not <laughs> yeah. thinking straight and he's he can't write notes properly. No, I'm I'm not blaming Travis over my misread there. But um, <laughs> nonetheless, we're getting back to the Acolyte back on track here. But yeah, so it's been filming. Uh, we have a couple casting, um, which it had a list of people. I unfortunately don't really recognize too many of the names the big <laughs> ones would be carrie ann moss you know we got uh trinity uh, from matrix in there uh and then the other one is daphne keen who is um she's logan's daughter in in right in logan i forget her uh, 
I I haven't seen that movie too many times. I apologize, super fans out there. But and then the other one is Lee Jung Jae. I hope I'm saying that name right. I believe he's from Squid Game. He's like the the lead from Squid Game. Yeah. Um. So I I loved him in that. And again, like you know, it's nice to see some cast members on there. Um. And then we have a plot. So let me read this out. Apparently the plot is, The Acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. A former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, but the forces they confront are more sinister than they ever anticipated. Should I do readings for like books or something? You should. Or, like, you really just like should. trailers? That, that felt good. That felt right. The hairs are um, on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're scared by the mystery th- thriller aspect of it. <laughs> um, but I mean, Maybe I'll pass it to you here because I really don't know anything about the High Republic. Like, uh, other than I've heard it's good. I've heard, I've heard they're putting out some good content books wise and stuff like that. Go check out the GV Discord because I know there's some great discussions on spoiler talk for our, the last two novels or the last novel, High Republic, whatever it might be. I stay away from it because obviously I haven't read it. I don't want to get spoiled on something that I might read in the future. Um, but, Taylor Field, me listing off that plot, more than just raising your, your hairs from my powerful, effective delivering that information there what's like the just your overall thought on the synopsis now <clears throat> i've not gone into a deep dive of all the comics and all of the what? books for the higher public. Here. i know the <laughs> scrub i have been following along just the main adult and some of the young adult novels with travis throughout our reviews uh there should be another one coming out this month i believe if we're fortunate enough me and travis but anyway so I don't know everything all in the background of what's going on. I only know a few things like the Drain Gear and then the Nihil. Those are the main two components that were up against the galaxy at this time. So <clears throat> when you talk about Sith, which I'm assuming Acolyte still is referring to Dark Side Force users of some shape or form, mm-hmm. I have not seen that yet in my experience with the High Republic. I have seen people tempted by the dark side and people kind of dealing with, like Jedi dealing with this kind of thing, but nothing along the lines of a guy just, yeah, yeah oh yeah, I'm a Sith acolyte, I'm a Sith Lord, I'm this and that. So I hope that I think, lines in the show. Oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the Sith guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that there's a lot of potential here to tap into because we haven't gotten that yet, at least mm-hmm. to my knowledge, but... The way that they kind of listed it off, I was hoping that we would have got a show focused on a young Padawan acolyte who is in training to become a Sith Lord with a Sith Master. Literally, like, if we got that Darth Plagueis as a show, oh. the book, like, fuck. Don't tease me. Yeah, yeah. Like, it'd be fantastic. But no, of course, they're going to say, fuck you and not do that and give us the James Gunn fuck you thing on Twitter. Um, <laughs> you didn't do that. No. But uh, No, at least they didn't give us this. <laughs> <laughs> His fucking face. He's so serious. <laughs> Did you load that uh, in or was that Travis? No, that's that was Travis. I, I, oh I, I entered God. the room today and it was just on. But it like it wasn't there when I joined. I like went to the bathroom. I come back. It's just there. So Travis oh must have pulled a quick one and jumped in there. But <sighs> fuck, that one got us a lot of laughs. Apologies to the, the audio listeners. We pulled up a little... What would you call that? Like a meme template thing? It's just yeah, it's the meme. I don't even want to describe it. Just tune into the video, and you'll you'll see mm-hmm. what we're talking about. And I'm sure it'll be popped up in, in the next few weeks of casts. Um, are we gonna throw something else there? Yeah, just kind of in closing. It, it's just such a shame that we aren't getting that kind of story focused on a, like a Sith upbringing or an acolyte upbringing or something like that. That being said, we could very well get it. Um, the idea and the concept of just having more Jedi more dark side, just more force users on screen is fantastic. That's what I want. That's what I really, really wanted because Obi-Wan yeah. scratched that itch a little bit. We didn't get enough of it. And then we got a tiny bit of Mandalorian season two and then a nice full episode and a half in Boba F- uh, Book of Boba Fett of Luke Skywalker. So there's still little tidbits of it, but I want to see the uh, Padawan, the former Padawan, the master. I want to see that like, oh, just give it to me. That'd be so fantastic. Yeah. We Obi-Wan had some cool sequences, but just give me something new to work with. And this is, it's it's bold. It's not bold enough because I feel like Disney could be so much more bolder with this. But it's definitely, oh, yeah. it is bold nonetheless to be going into an era of the High Republic that they created. Uh, this is their whole kind of 
new creation zone and sandbox that they've constructed, which is great. Mm-hmm. And now they're creating a show piggybacking off of that at the tail end of it. I think that's fantastic. This is really yeah. the first time they're breaking away from the pre-established narrative in the Star Wars universe. And right. I commend them for that. That's very, very good. And if this show does well and is very well received, then I think we could anticipate more content branching out from the same old, same old, because then Disney will feel like, hey, you know, maybe we can get away with doing other things in the dark times. Don't get me wrong. I love the fucking dark times, but this would definitely pave the way. And I think, uh, yeah, I think that's that's what the fans want. It's what we all want. So, Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm growing to like, I mean, I feel like I never hated the dark times. I understand people's like exhaustion from it. I feel like I've just been totally reignited though going through Andor. I am, Oh yeah. I mean, you're there with me on those reviews. I'm fucking loving that show. It is so amazing and just seeing here like the mystery thriller like genre what this could be. I'm like, "Oh, like if, if that's going to be more Andor, but like possibly you know, especially if they're actually talking about dark side stuff like, oh my god, like that that's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. It's not what I would have it's, it wouldn't have been my first choice. My first choice obviously would have been like what I was kind of headcanning initially when I saw the title of Acolyte, which is like, oh, the rule of two, like the old republic, like all this old stuff. And again, it's probably a fantasy that I probably won't ever get to, um, unfortunately, because there's so much content there. But I totally get the want to like attach it to something close to the High Republic because as you mentioned, like that's their that's their new thing that they're really pushing for. Like that is their that's their new canon stories, right? Like we have the legends, but they made an effort, like when Disney took it, it's like those are just legends. Um and then they they've been changing things and say up the High Republic and fortunately the High Republic I mean, I don't think I've heard a negative thing about it. Uh so that's really good from just the content that they're doing there. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I don't want to say it's yeah, like, I, I don't want to say this is, oh, it's going to suck because of X, Y, or Z reasons. Like, you know, that's that's not even fair because it's not even out yet. I haven't given High Republic a chance or anything like that. It's just, like, my personal want would have been, like, oh, that old Republic stuff because there's just so much juice there. And mm-hmm. some of my favorite Star Wars content is that early stuff, especially when you're talking about, like, the Darth Bane series and all that stuff. You, you've you heard me rant about it before. I, I love all that stuff. So, yeah, that being said, though, me going through this plot... I, th- I still think that's really intriguing, the mystery thriller aspect. Um, I'm hoping that they really push the envelope on like what what they can get away with of making it like a, a darker type story. Because I think Andor has already been showing glimpses of that. Like we talked about, I'm not going to spoil anything here, but the, there's just uh, the way that the Empire kind of just genocide like a certain people on a planet and the way that they describe it. It's like that is very dark shit. And like that was unexpected from like a Star Wars uh property i guess you could say because i mean there's been so much star wars content out there but it's always just been like oh yeah it's for kids you know for families and stuff like that but when they they talk about certain things like that it's like oh this is like this is real heavy shit you know like it isn't just like fantasy type violence anymore which i guess it is but you know they're they're bouncing along that line so i think the plot sounds really awesome honestly um i'm i'm still really excited for this project when it eventually comes which hopefully Hopefully, like, within a year, like, it would be close. Like, do you think that's out of the realm of possibility of if they're filming through May? I, I don't know what the edit cycle... I, I'm really not good at, like, setting up, like, a time frame on these type of releases things. Usually, Travis is good at that. Um, but, I mean, it, it's not going to be too, too far away if they're if they are filming now through May. It's filming up into May, so yeah. also spring... Yeah, Google kind of reaffirms what I was thinking. You probably wouldn't see it until late 2023. I think you'd probably see yeah. maybe holiday time. So holiday like time. That. That's that's yeah. the Star Wars time. You know, that like, is that's Star perfect Wars time. to be releasing a show like that. So for me, I think this is really. I, I'm I'm excited for it. The you know the cast members. Um, I didn't recognize everyone in there, but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything negative. It just means I don't know. Maybe I'll be finding like a new new favorite actor or something from the show you know the, the the people that really shine through and I, I just can't wait to see that first trailer and i really hope it delivers on like setting the tone of what the show will be um but yeah i don't know do you have anything else to add on this acolyte news uh no i don't think so just that yeah. if if they want to you know really commit to it they should do those dark undertones, give it that dark CD aesthetic, and just don't tell Kathleen Kennedy. Just fucking put it in there and release it. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, addressing some things in the chat here. We got S-Bubs. Um, 
again the guy in the chair helping me out saying yeah it was for a movie that director for sean sean levy directing that star wars project um he says it's not for it's not <laughs> acolyte it's for a different movie another movie that it's probably really, will release <laughs> really reinforcing it. oh yeah yeah and uh i mean that ties into again s bubs asked this patreon question which go join the patreon you can put in a question for any newscast you don't have to be here live s bubs wild man he's here live and puts a question in this in the in the s pubs in the patreon and he the was S-pubs. asking when do you think we'll actually get a star wars movie in theaters taylor field he didn't say taylor field uh, i threw that in there he wasn't specifically asking you but I, i'll go first i'll go first because you're, okay. you're thinking about it first so i did some googling here i saw that kathleen kennedy's contract goes till 2024 i don't think we're gonna get a movie till 2026 <laughs> <laughs> that's my prediction i think she's gonna yeah. be gone it's gonna be a very just kick her kick her out of the uh, out of the chair out, out of the uh out of the building or whatnot don't kick her just get her out of there bring in the new guard and then within like a year or so that's when we actually have like a big movie thing and again i don't fully believe that but <laughs> my meme choice is kind of outweighing my, my real thoughts there because i don't see one soon like really like within i'm i don't think there's gonna be one in the next two years i don't think we're gonna be seeing a star wars movie in theaters i might be bold for me to say i don't know they haven't given me any reason to like really doubt my thoughts there what about you i uh, okay i got two parts to this rant because i've been freaking out travis earlier and then i was freaking out in the discord so (laughs) here i told you to bring the energy did you 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 save it i i got it so this is this is how it, it can go play out now when you say like 2026 after the contract ends in 2024 i totally can get behind that i really think there's a lot of credibility to that even though it could be meme in it could be whatnot like it's totally true now the other thing which i speculate that scares the living (laughs) fucking shit out of me pardon my language it's gonna get salty here but you have 2024 be the due date here it we're in 2022 going to 2023 now if she really wanted she could have she could be stringing us along, these directors dropping out, these news, all that stuff. But she could have that movie on the back burner that's being worked on right now that no one knows about. And then she could aim to drop this movie in 2024 and it could be super well received. Mm. And Duca's film is going to be like, oh, Kathleen Kennedy, let's renew your contract because you're so good. And look at this movie you just put out and everyone's loving it. And you got such a good track record with TV shows like Andor and Obi-Wan. And she's going to get signed off for another four fucking years and not put out a single goddamn movie until 2028. <laughs> and then people are going to be just fucking peeved like myself. It's just, that's a fear of mine and it really concerns me. I'm hoping that doesn't come true because I'm hoping they get her ass out of there. I've been super, super kind and super optimistic with her leading the charge. But this term of her contract, I mean, yes, she has put that stamp of approval on these projects that we've got in the Obi-Wan and the Andor and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, that's that's it and this leads to the second point of my my topic your conversation we live in the fucking modern age we live in the beautiful world of entertainment where we can literally do anything we want we got technology for green screens that look real we can do anything we we have the te- we have the power we can literally go to fucking space i've seen the news we can grow blood in laboratories now but can we make a fucking Star Wars movie? No. <laughs> God fucking damn it. God forbid. <laughs> Shit. We can't make a bloody Star Wars movie. Directors are dropping like flies off this bloody project. It shouldn't be that goddamn hard. If you're not going to do shit all with this fucking IP, you're just going to be making you know, great shows, which I like, but give us a fucking movie, then just sell off the movie rights or something like that. Because you're what clearly doing jack shit with them. If you're I just going to hold them like George Lucas then, you know, fuck off. But, like, just give them to someone else. Give them to Universal Studios. Universal Studios will fucking go to town with them. They'll put fucking Star Wars rides in their theme park and all that shit. Like, oh, my God. It's just absolutely tragic. It gets my blood boiling. <sighs> That's fair. And on just to, like, break up the... the give, it, give it a little heat sink to let you cool down a little bit. Shade recently got back from Disneyland. She said the Star Wars section absolutely phenomenal oh my gosh there's just like when you're in like galaxy's edge there's just like little like star wars sounds in the bushes and stuff and you just mm. totally feel immersed and she said it was 100 percent worth it it was it was absolutely fantastic but i like how i could just break that into your absolute rant on star wars there um <laughs> yeah then just addressing some things in the chat um star wars 2028 it's funny i said 2026 so fanboy clay is pretty close to me uh s bubs jj abrams 500 million dollar contract 2.0 that 
Taylor would just take like a two week off break from podcasting. Probably he would just need some time to settle. Oh yeah, sell my shares off, just be gone. (laughs) I can't talk about this shit anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like I was at like, what are they scared of? Like why? Like why not just put a movie out there and just? It doesn't have to be like a budget of five hundred billion dollars or whatever the hell it is. Like just put out a project that's lower scale and you can just tell a really good tale in the Star Wars universe. I think, you know, and or. It's a prequel to uh, Rogue, One. Rogue One. It's mm-hmm. it's you know it's in this dark times like it's leading to like the stories that we already know. But I still feel like it's it is contained at least to like it's maybe it's a bad example because the budget I don't know what the budget is on the show, but it looks fantastic. But you can tell a really small scale story for uh, in Star Wars. Like it doesn't have to be the big oh Palpatine's back somehow and it's just like we always have to be next leveling up like we have the Death Star now we have Starkiller Base next we're gonna have Star Sun or something like that like we don't need that stuff just you know smaller scale story um I think your I think your rant there was very well deserved but well, yeah it's it, and like if it does go the route like what you're saying it's like a tinfoil hat theory that she is just like holding on to this to like extend her contract God, I hope that's not the case because that is just some grimy ass shit. Like, it's just people love this content. And if, like, it's just being limited because of someone's trying to hold on to their job or something, that is just so grimy. Get the shit, like, get that shit out of Hollywood, I guess, Disney, whatever the hell it is. Like, it's, we, we don't need that. We need creative, like, good thinkers because that's, that's essentially what got us here, right? Like, Star Wars started as an idea from George Lucas. And that's all it was. Like, it was just an idea that he came up with. Did it, you know kind of on his own um <laughs> with some money there obviously let's start lucasfilm but um yeah at the end of the day these are just ideas and i i just keep keep sharing ideas to get new creative people in there hopefully that's going to be the route with dc now with james gunn peter safran like just just fresh free, like new thinkers of how they can handle that situation so hopefully uh-huh. that big change comes interesting kind of closing to that like you you highlighted it briefly like you don't need to you can focus on the simpler stories you don't need to go into something huge and granular for star wars and i think you're totally right that being said like you don't need that 500 uh, million budget you don't need any of that high fancy flamboyant mumbo jumbo if you look at films like pardon these examples but i've seen the uh Ter- terrifier 2 like that had like a super super low budget and it made a killing at the box office you look at joker low budget killing at the box office paranormal activity Mm -hmm. one low uh budget killer at the box office like these are the kind of films like (laughs) the other day or some of them are all of them going to be great no but these are films and great examples of just having small contained stories that can just earn and generate a large amount of profit if they're done well and i think uh, for the most part they they are done well so that's what star wars needs to be and like you had that with andor if uh we got a movie that was focused on andor it's just the jailbreak stuff with andy circus and everything i would eat that shit up it'd be an oh, yeah. awesome imperial jailbreak like concepts so like something like we're getting a show and it's great because we can focus on a lot more avenues but this would be andor would be totally something i'd be down to see cinematically it would be fantastic just the mm-hmm. feel as we talked about in the reviews you see in cinematic experiences with the Empire, it's like 10,000 uh, Star Destroyers, TIE Fighters, whatever. And you just, you, it's like, wow, it's granular. It's everything. It's cinematic. But you don't feel really grounded and I don't want to say humbled by just the overwhelming power like you do with Andor where that one TIE Fighter is flying over. It's mm-hmm. like, holy fuck. And to feel that in a theater, the simplicity of it. It could deliver. It could be like, holy fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, S Pub's throwing some great titles for some oh movies here. We got God. Mandalorian, the motion picture coming <laughs> 2027. <laughs> fuck, man. I could see it happening. They're like, Mando, we got Grogu in there. Everybody loves it. Let's make it into a new movie. Fuck, please no. no. This one's amazing. Rogue One 2. <laughs> Andor lives. Holy shit, that's fantastic! You got the success of everybody loving on Diego Luna, just just brings it back somehow. Somehow, Cassian Andor survived, and it's it's got to be like Scar's Guard, where it's like <laughs> Cassian Andor. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, any closing thoughts on the Star Wars stuff? I know we just kind of ranted, no, but you know that's that it. that's what it kind of feels like to be a Star Wars fan these days, and. You know, I am hopeful because, like we said, like you know, tune into our Andor reviews. We're we're loving that show, so that's that's all great. But it's just unfortunate when you get into the big screen stuff. It's just, it's just, 
it could be going so much better. Like, imagine just getting like a Star Wars movie every year, and just like oh. if, if it's in that Christmas time slot, like, fuck, man, they'd be making so much bank. They don't have to make those like Last Jedi or uh, yeah, I guess Last Jedi, but like Force Awakens numbers. Like, it doesn't need to be that. <sighs> But yeah, I know. put a, like I said, we put a man on the fucking moon. We can't put a man in, in a fucking Star Wars movie director's <laughs> chair. God damn, absolutely. All right, we're gonna. I think we're gonna take our last ad break here, and then we're gonna be moving on to some trailers, some some possible Netflix stuff going on. So we will be right back. All right, Taylor, we are ready to rock here. So we got. We got like a trailer and a half. I say a half because one of them is for Zootopia uh, Plus, I think it was called. And um, I, I call it a half because the show is out basically at the time of this recording. We recorded this, you know, if you tuned in live November 8th, but the show comes out November 9th. So this will be on the main feed uh, November 9th, unless you're a Patreon because then you'll get it early. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be out already. It's going to be a... I think nine episode series, I possibly six, something like that. Um, on Disney Plus, like I said, the first episode is dropping. I can't remember if they're all at once. I th- I feel like it kind of would be. I feel like Zootopia wouldn't be the thing to be dropping like weekly or whatnot. Weekly midnight um, reviews. Yeah, are you a big uh, are you a big uh, um, Zootopia fan? <laughs> uh, if what I remember holds true, um, I watched the first one quite a bit ago but it was definitely enough that i really enjoyed it i've only seen it the one time i definitely do want to get into it though and, and like revisit that world so i am intrigued by this I, de- I definitely like i checked into the trailer and it seems pretty interesting and exciting but uh yeah like all around like i would consider myself to be on the more positive spectrum of zootopia i just i need to go back and revisit that film because it's been a good minute since i have yeah I I really really like it honestly. Um, I I feel like it's I like watched it probably like with some like cousins or whatnot, and then like actually like rewatched it again with Shay. It's like oh this is actually a really clever show. I really like just the world building that they did. Like it really feels like a full world just ran by animals and whatnot. And I think um, what's his name Jason Bateman. He he plays the fox character. Uh, he he's so fantastic. I I I just really like Jason Bateman too, and I think just his. The way that he would like bounce off of Judy Hopps, like they, I just like that chemistry. So I really liked like the characters, and then maybe like the world building secondary, which is crazy because the world building is really good of just this like the different biomes, I guess, where the different animals would live and stuff like that. But they were just they had so much heart, and I really liked those two characters. They mentioned Judy a lot. Did we see her in the trip? I I think we might have seen her for like a split second. Um, but I didn't see Jason Bateman's character in there. I don't think he'll be in this. But the show really seems like it's just centered around a couple different like uh, events or like just things that go on in the world. They had like again like I don't remember all of them, but they have like their spin on like Dancing with the Stars or like mm. those classic shows. But it's like the the zoo animal type uh, take on it. So it looks fun. It looks cute. Like I said at the time of this recording, it'll be out already. So Shay and I we have so many things to watch right now because she was in Disneyland for a whole week, and then when she got back that Friday or that week she was gone the friday so many shows came out it's insane mm-hmm. we just finished breaking bad last night um blew her mind i, I had seen it already but you know it's a great finale and then uh so yeah we'll, we'll probably watch that in the future do you think you'll be checking it out i will definitely be checking this out for sure yeah. I'm, I'm a big sucker for the animal kind of world building that they do i always like the movie sing and sing too with just can you get the animals just living the day-to-day I lives watch that actually it's not bad. I think the first one's better than the second one, but yeah. um okay. yeah, no, it's 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 good. I think I think Zootopia, it's in the name. Like as you were saying, like with different worlds that we got to explore in that first one, like there's still so much to just kind of dive into and kind of uh, explore. So let's let's have at it. And if each episode is kind of just its own kind of narrative, focusing on different areas and just kind of parroting life as we know it, I think that's great. I think it's super super clever. Absolutely. All right, and so that's that's Zootopia plus i think it's just called on disney Mm -hmm. plus so if you have disney plus very easy to watch that um and then the other i guess we'll just go to the other trailer right now because the last news isn't isn't a trailer um but knives out is not the title travis wrote down the notes so travis you're getting deducted something (laughs) just kidding uh glass onion this is 
no, it's not even really like a sequel to to Knives Out because it's like an anthology type thing. It's just like another story. A Knives Out story is what they call it or something. Okay, like that. there you go. So, um, I think the only returning character is um, Mr. Uh, Craig. Yeah, Mr. Craig, Benoit, something. Ben, I, it's just Detective Benoit or something like that. But Taylor Field, what did you think of this trailer? It's a very long trailer. Um, it is pretty long. Now, yeah. I really, really like the first one. I like how simple it was. Uh, the more trailers I see for this movie, while it's got a great lineup of uh, like actors, actresses, uh, it feels just really, really granular, and I'm not really digging that. Like, I'm sure when I watch it, it will be more on the positive spectrum, but I like the first one because it felt simple. It felt low-key, it felt subtle, and it felt like a really good whodunit. And uh, getting into this, it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of makes me feel a little off with how it's just being so granular and just like they've made it super flamboyant and everything like that. I don't know. It's just Use it's that word not... twice. And as you're going, I had to Google it. And that's not actually a word. Granular. There's granular, which is like about like grains and particles. And I'm like, that's not what he's talking about. But then I heard the D Are in there. Are you serious? Granular does not exist. It exists is it a word that urban... you use a lot? I do use it a lot. It exists I in had the that urban effect. dictionary. Fuck. I had that effect. I think I, I used to always describe things as like visceral because it just like it just hits raw. That's the way I described it. That's actually not what that means at all. Visceral is something completely different. And I just keep going with it because it just sounds like it just sounds like what I'm trying to convey. And, you know, all words are made up at the end of the day. So if I make up a word, it is what it is. Shit. Grandular. <laughs> Grandular. Yeah. I like know what you're talking about with the way that you use it and it's like grand <laughs> grandiose or something like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. Grandular. It's sorry. Sorry, Webster, sorry to so. shout you out, but I just had to, you know. No, it's all freaking to. good. It's all good. Um <laughs> now I know because I thought that was a real word, but shit. Mm. Yeah. Um <laughs> I I do think though that this film didn't need to be Gradular. Uh, it could have just been like more low key at the end of the day. It didn't need to be just over the top. And maybe it won't be. Maybe when we watch it, it'll just be super, super low key and just be kind of uh, a small whodunit, which is exactly what I want from this. And I hope that that is what we get. So, yeah, yeah it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds because I'm very, very curious. Yeah. Um, I am kind of in the opposite here where I I really like like the big scale and like granular effect of what's going on and how they're mm -hmm. just on this Edward Norton's like super just rich mansion, like a Tony Stark type mansion thing. It looks super cool. And I, I just think like with, I don't like, I guess the glass onion is supposed to be like the house because it has that big glass onion looking thing. Mm -hmm. um, it just looks like a type of house that has so many different like secret like I don't know, secret routes, you know, the trap doors and stuff like that. And I, I, I think that stuff is really, really fun. It really scratches that, like, clue itch that I had back in the day. I mm -hmm. haven't seen, like, a lot of murder mysteries, but I feel like I was really, like, a big fan of that original clue. I don't even know when it came out in the 70s or something because my, my family had, like, the board game off of, like, the movie. So, like, the movie characters were on the board, and we played right. that game all the time. So that, I think, is why I probably love the first one so much. On on top of just, like, the character performances, Tony Collette was just phenomenal on there, on top of uh, Chris Evans and Armis. Like, the casting was just phenomenal. And I was a little bummed that not all those characters were returning because this is just, like, an anthology Knives Out tale. Uh, the only returning one is Detective Benoit. But, man, I love this trailer. All the different kooky characters, I definitely think it's, it's hitting that category of... Um, just like the type of characters that were in the first one, how kooky they were. It's like, oh, we're getting more of them. And although they're not the same actors, like they still are hitting that that niche for me. And Dave Batista, man, just when he's like in that like banana hammock type speedo thing, he's just all tatted up with like that gun that he's always got and he's shooting it off. I can't wait to see him on screen. I, I'm very much looking forward to this. Uh, November 23rd, so this month it's coming out. Um, I think it's on Netflix too when it's coming out, which is just crazy. It, yeah. it, it might be like, oh, that's what it is. So November no, blah, November twenty third in theaters, and then December twenty third on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to go in theaters to see it, it's totally fine. It's gonna be coming to Netflix about a month later. Um, and yeah, I I can't wait for this this movie. I I really really love the first one, um, and I'm I'm excited for this one. And I think Daniel Craig signed on for like however many movies of this series. So I'm 
I hope I really love this one because I this is just like a series that I think Ryan Johnson's did really good with the first one, and from what I've seen in this trailer, um, it's got me it's got me wanting wanting more. So, uh, well, yeah. he's free from uh, his 007 uh, duties, so Ryan that's Johnson's right. Like, let's fucking get you. Spoiler in here. alert: he fucking died in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. And then our last piece of news here to round off this fabulous two man GV news episode is about Gears of War. Um, very iconic Xbox series. Taylor Field, I know you got a lot of history with it. Um, I'll only shout out the positive stuff. You have a lot of fun with that game. Um, but apparently, it's been announced that it's getting a Netflix adaptation, which I would imagine is a TV series. Uh, um, animated adult animated series i believe on adult Netflix. animated and okay a, thea- a theatrical film as well i believe i believe theatrical. Oh, okay i missed that piece of news i wasn't sure exactly what it was um but yeah you, i mean you, you take us or maybe i'll go first here because you're, you're the gears guy i have limited gears uh knowledge I, I played the first one with my dad i think most of the way he's way more of a gears fan than me he like he would go online and just like pwn noobs and like online like they would try and add him and stuff and he had like the default like xbox live where it's like unpeeled onion one or something like you know it's just like a default name and that people would like try and add him because he's just like mobbing on these kids so who knows maybe we'll have to face him sometime and just humble him but uh no we just for that reason like i i was aware of the gears franchise i th- i thought it was always like a, a cool world sort of thing um and like a cool story i guess badass just big muscular dudes with chainsaw guns and all that stuff um and i don't know i i, I feel like i felt oh that's pretty cool that it's happening it's good for gears fans but you actually totally piqued my interest saying that it is it would be like a more adult animation thing of kind of i guess what like the witcher animated uh movie was or the castlevania where castlevania, it actually is like sure. very gory um mm-hmm. but the anime style i big fan of anime and just animation in general so this this actually really piques my interest and i i'm very very interested in see what uh comes out of this what whether it is that animated show or the full-on movie but what are your thoughts on it so uh yes i am a super super big gears of war fan when i went into this franchise it would have been playing some gears 2 um i can't it's been so long playing gears 2 gears war 3 i remember when that came out got onto that and it was very much after the fact because i was i was born bred halo fan that's what i was all about so when uh I got around to Gears 3 when that came out. It was fantastic and backtracked to Gears 1 and 2. And I just loved it so, so freaking much. The story is so emotional. hits home. There was one time where eventually, like years, years later, I ended up being broke. And uh, they cut really? my internet. Oh, yeah. They cut my internet off. So I couldn't afford the internet. So I couldn't do anything online. So I was like, okay, well, we're going to go through the DVD collections. And we're going to go through the um, uh offline games so i went and redid all the gears of war games again which is great uh, this is well before gears of war 4 or anything like that came out which is fine but uh yeah so when gears of war 4 came out though it was just it was cool to get into the story well it's a little bit diluted now with gears 5 but to <laughs> tackle this story in a cinematic experience would be fantastic if it's done right i'm very concerned because of halo but <laughs> as far as netflix it goes for doing like i'm assuming that they're not doing just the show but they're doing have a hand in the film i like how netflix does handle these things and i'm very like i need to see how they do assassin's creed before i can properly gauge how they would do gears of war related content <clears throat> that's yeah. a big kicker for me but at the end of the day gears of war there is so many moments in that franchise that brings me to tears it is so powerful how they deliver certain components of that story and if it's not done right it would leave a deeply sour taste in my mouth Uh, you think more so than the halo like you said you're like the halo is huge attachment to you um that one was hard to kind of get through and and deal with that by the end it kind of became humorous for us to watch uh but do you think it would just be like you went through that event, and then if you go through another event, it's just like I can't trust video game like franchises probably, on shows I anymore. I probably couldn't. Yeah, that's just yeah. that's the most difficult thing is because Halo hits home for me in so many, so many not just nostalgic but so many brilliant, brilliantly narratively written ways with their characters and the way they fi- uh, not film but the way they uh, 
created different moments in those video games and in those books. And mm-hmm. when you look at Gears of War, it's the same thing, but they, it makes me feel different things. And it just tackles, both franchises tackle amazing elements of humanity, the worst, the best, and then the opposing foes that are factored into the narrative. So when you look at Gears of War, and if it's not done the right way, man, I'd, I would fucking lose my shit. I hope to God that they would do it the right way because the characters in Gears of War are all so very unique. Yeah. And we've already got Dave Bautista in Gears of War. He's already in Gears of War 4, so... Is um, he actually? That's funny. You haven't seen that, eh? I'm going to show you a quick photo of him. I feel like maybe I have in the past and I forgot about it because... I, I mean, you know, go and join our pa- Patreon because you can post a question on any episode, like I already said. But Joshua Wright, one of our Patreon producers, he posed the question of who's your ideal casting for a live-action Gears of War project? And I... Right off the top of the head, I just said Dave Bautista. Um, and it makes sense because I had seen him already in the role. Um, that's so funny. Cause he, like, he just looks like a Gears character. <laughs> like He fits so well, even with the shades on there. Give me what I want. I'm not going to pull the clip because we'll get fucking copyright strike again. Um, but yeah, man, he... he if ever like real aliens came and we needed big Gears dudes in suits, I want him strapping up because he just totally fits the bill. Um, mm-hmm. was Terry Crews in there too? Because that was another name that I just had at the top of my head. It's it's mostly just picturing like big dudes <laughs> in suits in there. Um, I, not saying you have to limit it to only no. men. There's probably females oh. in the franchise. Oh he, my gosh, that's Crackdown, isn't it? Or whatever that it called. is. Crackdown. Yeah, <laughs> there was rumors. I think of Terry Crews or something like that with Gears of War. But no, yeah, it's just Crackdown was uh was a thing he was a part of. It was a thing, wasn't it? Do you have any names top of your head that you'd pitch? Dave Batista is probably like the gold standard, but oh man, yeah, Steve Austin, just other wrestlers. <laughs> That's John exactly Cena. it. I saw yeah. uh, roster was like, yeah, John Cena, Dave Batista, like all those guys, get them in there, and that's probably who I would go to. Like even The Rock, we need people with big fucking arms, like really big oh. to just go in there. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would I would definitely put my money. Maybe not John Cena. I'd probably go with The Rock. Um, but you, if you're really? going to f- I would, yeah. If you're going to go with characters to play, or actors to play, uh, Dom and Marcus, uh, they're two main characters in the franchise. Yeah. You need to have someone that can really just deliver that emotional aspect. I don't want, like, I don't even need, like, that big name, someone very famous. And I feel like Dave Bautista could really do that well. He could play a... Um, Dave Bautista as a Marcus Phoenix. I could really, really see that, actually. That would probably really work. Who would play Dom? I don't know, but... You need got to buddy have from, Ma- from Halo. You got Master Chief. Forget oh, his name. Oh, Master Cheeks. No thanks. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, right on. Um, very well said. Um, you know, keep your eyes on the feeds. We'll be addressing any and all new news about this subject. And yeah, no matter what happens, we'll probably be there because it's video game geek type news. So we'll, we'll be covering it uh, when it eventually happens. But. Taylor Field, that's the end of my notes. We did a fantastic hour and a half newscast. We went a little bit longer than I was expecting, but that's fine. We had a lot of great discussions and all that stuff. And uh, thank you to everyone, S. Bubs, Fanboy Clay in the chat, um, M. Emeritus. I always, I, I hope I'm Pickens, saying right. Pickens. Pick, yeah, Pickens. There you go. I'll go by last name basis. But thank you to all of you that j- jumped in. I said plugs at the beginning. Huge shout out to everyone that donated for Extra Life. That was a fantastic, fun time. Tune in next time because it will not be boring. Bye-bye.